well. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Jess. Here on my channel, I make a lot of plant videos. I also do gardening videos. I also do some home decor and DIYs here. So if that's something that you're into, be sure to hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell so that you'll be notified anytime that I upload a video. So today, you guys, I am back with my April Plant Spotlight. We are still going strong with this series, you guys. So today's plant feature is gonna be this gorgeous plant I have sitting to my right here. I'll go ahead and just bring it over so you guys can see it. This is a Diffenbachia. It's also known as a dumb cane. So this plant is actually native to the subtropics of Mexico, the West Indies, and South America. So it's not native to the United States, but it's very close by. As you can see, it is known for its very tropical, lush green foliage. Um, and a lot of them come with different patterns on their leaves. Some of them are speckled. Y'all know I love my speckled leaves. Some of them have like a very deep veining on them. And then there's also different hues of green. So love, love, love Diffenbachias. They are my second favorite plant genus. Y'all know that I love Aglaonemas, but Diffenbachias are my second favorite. So I'm super excited to share this one with you guys. This one in particular is the Diffenbachia Compacta. I know I hauled this one a couple months ago for you guys, so it is still doing well. I have actually not repotted it yet. It's still in its original pot. So let's go ahead and just jump into some of the care tips of this plant. I'm not gonna keep you guys too long. You know how I normally do this. I break it down into categories. So first up, I'm gonna talk about the lighting. So most Diffenbachias do prefer bright, indirect light. However, some varieties will adapt to different types of lighting conditions. So you can actually put some of them anywhere from low light all the way up into bright, indirect light. Again, just depending on the variety. Um, and what bright, indirect light means is you want to have it back away from a south-facing window or a west-facing window. You don't want anything sitting in direct sunlight that can burn these leaves. Um, so if you have like a sheer curtain over your windows, that is perfect. Anything to filter that light so it's not too harsh for the plant leaves. So next, let's talk about the soil. So most Diffenbachias do prefer a well-draining, light, airy mix, as most houseplants do, um, but they do like their soil to stay evenly moist. Not too soggy, but just evenly, lightly moist. So you will want to use something that is peat-based, um, but just be sure if you are using a peat-based um, mixture that you wanna to toss in some pumice, some orchid bark, something to break up that soil just to allow more air to get to those roots. They're not getting any risk of root rot. So that's gonna move me into watering. As I stated, Diffenbachias do prefer to stay evenly moist. Um, so what I typically recommend for Diffenbachias is to water more often, just water lightly. So what I do in particular, this may not work for everybody, but I have had amazing success with all of my Diffenbachias watering this way. I prefer to bottom water. Um, so what I'll do is I keep most of mine in a cash pot, such as this white one here. They're still in a black nursery pot that has plenty of holes. I'll just set this down into a tray of water, let it sit and soak up what it needs. And then once it's done soaking, I'll remove it and put it back into this cash pot. And I just do that once a week on the same day, every single week, and I have no issues. So that's what works for me. Um, if you are a top waterer or if you have a pot that does not have holes for you to be able to sit it down and soak, which I don't recommend those, but if that's what you're using, that's fine. Um, just water, make sure that you are waiting until the top few inches of soil are dry before you water your plants. Um, just because these are very easy to overwater and when you overwater the plants, the leaves tend to yellow and then start to brown and it just does not look sightly. So those are my tips for watering. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna talk about growth. So as you can see, Diffenbachias do have an upright growth habit. All Diffenbachias grow this way. They do grow upwards, and then they also tend to drop their bottom leaves. And as they drop their bottom leaves, they expose this beautiful cane structure that they grow from. They have a really thick stalk. You can't really see it on this one because this one is kind of like a really full plant. But I will insert some pictures so you guys can see what I'm talking about. That's part of where they get their name their nickname, Dumb Cane, um, is they have a nice cane structure that they grow from. Um, so that kind of leads me into pruning as well. 
Um, you will want to make sure that you're pruning off the bottom leaves. Again, these plants naturally drop their bottom leaves, you guys. So if you see your leaves starting to yellow just around the base, don't be alarmed, it's natural. The leaves drop, make sure you're pruning those off. Also make sure you're dusting your leaves often just to make sure that the plant can properly photosynthesize because these leaves are quite large and they tend to hold a bit of dust. Um, also with that, you will want to make sure that you're using filtered water, distilled water, or bottled water on your leaves. If you're seeing your top leaves start to yellow or brown, that is typically a sign of overwatering. If you're seeing browning on your tips of the leaves, that can be a sign of two different things. One could be a lack of humidity. Plant, these tropical plants do like high humidity. Um, so you want to make sure that you're running a humidifier or setting it on a tray of pebbles or setting some bottles around so that when the water evaporates, it's creating that humid environment for the plants. You can also go through and mist the plants if you like. I don't really recommend that just because you don't want water sitting on the leaves, but you can mist it occasionally to help with the humidity. Um, the other sign brown tips may mean is that you have minerals in your water. So you'll want to make sure that you're using either filtered or distilled water, or if you'd like to, you can buy bottled water. So that takes care of pruning. <laughs> So let's move on to temperature and hardiness. So Diffenbachia's are hardy zones 11 through 12. So if you do not reside in those gardening zones, you are probably going to be growing this indoors as a house plant, which is most common. Um, and then also they are native to the tropics, you guys. So you wanna make sure that you're growing these in a nice, warm, humid environment. You wanna keep this above 60 degree Fahrenheit, anywhere up to 80, 85, will keep this plant nice and happy. As far as fertilizer goes, you will want to make sure that you're fertilizing your Diffenbachias during the growing season, which is gonna be spring through fall. Um, and I just fertilize mine once a month. I use a regular liquid fertilizer. I use the Miracle Grow fertilizer that you just squirt into a gallon. Um, and I just recommend you guys make sure if you're reading the label, whatever the label says, cut that in half, half the dilution of whatever the label advises, just to make sure that when it's soaking up that fertilizer, you're not burning the roots and then it's coming up through the trunk and risking burning your foliage. So half dilute your fertilizer. If you have a more green foliage, like less variegation in the leaves, um, try to use something that is more nitrogen based to help bring out that deep green lush color in your different bucket. Next, I'm gonna talk about pests. So different bacchias, you guys, unfortunately are very prone to getting spider mites. So I know I say this in almost every single plant care video that I've done so far this year, but if you have not seen my how to permanently get rid of spider mites video, I'll leave it linked up in the cards, also down in the description box. Check that out, it works amazing, you guys. I'm telling you, I use that on not just this type of plant, it works on any type of plant, whether you have small leaves, fuzzy leaves, it's, it's amazing, you guys. All you need to do is mix up the mixture. It's just water, alcohol, and dish detergent. Thoroughly spray down your plant, get in there with a brush to break up those webs, let it soak, and then rinse it off, and just keep repeating that weekly until you notice all of the spider mites are completely gone. So definitely check out that video. Um, I did not read that this plant is prone to any other um, pests in particular, but I'm pretty sure they're prone to getting your occasional thrip or aphid, your common house plant pest. But spider mites is definitely the number one that this one is prone to. As far as propagation goes for this plant, you guys, it's super easy. All you need to do is take a cutting. You just go follow the leaf down to the base, take a cutting, and you can stick that cutting in either soil or water, and you'll have multiple different bucket little babies. They're very easy and very fast to grow roots in water. So that's typically how I tend to do it, is start them off in water and then I'll move them to soil, but both options work. Last but not least, I am going to talk about toxicity. So this plant, unfortunately, is extremely toxic, you guys, to both humans and pets. So if you have little fur babies running around like I do, I have two little kitties and a dog, um, you will want to make sure that you're keeping your different bakias up off the floor and out of their reach so they don't risk nibbling and chewing on your plants. Um, different bakias do produce a very toxic sap. Um, that once bitten or consumed, it will cause swelling. It can also cause oral irritation. It can cause vomiting. It also can cause excessive drooling. Um, it's just extremely toxic. It causes your tongue to go numb. 
Um, and it's also very hard to talk. So that is part of where it gets its nickname, Dumb Cane, is it can make you go dumb. So yeah, that's pretty much it, you guys. In a nutshell, this plant is super easy, super gorgeous, and you can pretty much grow them in any lighting condition. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy learning a little bit more about how to care for Diffenbachias. If you have any questions, leave those down in the description box. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you have. I hope that you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more. And as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.